Oh, the tour's been great. Mm -hmm. um, it's been overall, about nine out of ten gigs have been really good. And, uh, you know, well attended and stuff, like better than usual. So, yeah, it's really been, it's been nice. Yeah. I've mostly played in uh, Britain and one gig in Ireland so far on this tour. And then, but I've been in, in continental Europe for a few days and it's been great so far. It was um, sort of a long process, but um, it began with the, the Three Mile Island meltdown in, in Pennsylvania um, and, uh, and my introduction to the anti-nuclear movement at that time, around 19, the late 70s, early 80s when I was a kid. And, um, and that, was, that was kind of the introduction of, uh, to me for, about how messed up things are and, and how there are people trying to change things for the better and one of the things that they do quite regularly is, is uh, write songs and play music you know in that effort uh, to make thing, make the world a better place so that was uh, it was when I was 12 was when I was first really exposed to this to, to the progressive movement you could say I mean it was basically once I decided that I wanted to be a professional musician. Um, I basically took it kind of methodically, like I realized, okay, so if I want to be a professional musician, I'm going to have to become a much better songwriter and a much better guitarist. And uh, so I set about to do that by basically learning lots of other people's songs, like for hours every day for years. And, um, and then after doing that and, and getting to be a much better musician, I started writing songs that mostly were not very good, but I kept on working at it, and and eventually, you know, the songwriting got pretty good. And then, and then it was the process of sort of realizing that um, no matter how good you are, uh, you're not going to get a record deal with some big label. You have to book your own tours and organize your own life, and and so I when I, when I realized that, then I just started really trying to figure out well how. And how how is that done? And and I went on tour with uh, three different bands, playing bass or playing guitar and singing harmonies and that sort of thing, and learned how to do it through them basically. And you know, one of them in particular was very well organized, and so it was. Uh, I learned a lot from touring with that. With Robert Hoyt was his name, and um, and then and I was opening for him too, so I was doing my own music opening, so that helped a lot in getting an audience that was bigger than like the Boston area where I lived and and then I started I, I then I organized a tour and and that went pretty well and, and then I've been doing it ever since and that was 97 when I did my first sort of tour around the US and then I started touring in Europe two years later and then pretty much since then I've been doing a tour of Europe every year and a tour around the US every year there is a long history, uh, um, internationally, a long history of social movements that can, that have, and can, can, and sometimes do change society and, and change the world in a, in a very significant, positive way, and that social movements are really the only way, with very few exceptions, the social movements are how things change for the better, and if people are asleep at the wheel, then you know bad things happen. But when people are mobilized and, and keeping the pressure on the politicians and, and, and demanding a better world in, 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 in different ways, then they can succeed. And um, so what I aim to do is to tell stories from those social movements historically that have succeeded in changing things for the better and to tell stories about what's happening right now in the world around us in different countries. Um, that you know, where people are struggling to make the world a better place, and you know, sometimes you have to tell the stories that were not successes because there's still something really educational about them or something really iconic about them. But often, you know, the stories are success stories. You can and you can, you know, sh share these stories, and and so there's a this element of education, but there's also a big element of just sort of people need music to to enjoy life and to feel like they're part of a community and 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 music is also just good you know period you know whether it's political or not it's just a good thing certainly when i was doing the tour last fall around the u.s and canada and going to i played at 30 different occupies and uh, i definitely got a i think a good impression at that time of what was happening and what i saw was uh really 
I mean, you know, the movement needs to be bigger and, and could use a lot of different things. But basically, what I saw was the most uh, diverse, you know, in terms of age, ethnicity, class, the most diverse movement in my lifetime. And, uh, and really, a, a very much a working class movement or, or a, you know, non working class, you could say also, but, you know, basically both the working class and the formerly working class who are now unemployed. You know, and also, I, I think the slogan, uh, the 99%, you know, actually at the time that I first heard it, I thought, well, this is very vague and very general and very unspecific and it's, you know, not really very good at first. And a lot of other people on the left were saying the same thing. But then I realized that we were all wrong. It's a brilliant slogan. That it's the first slogan that I've ever encountered that really has brought together uh, the working class and the middle class. Because, I mean, really there's no such thing as the middle class in a way, but there's people who think of themselves as middle class and they think of themselves as separate from the working class. And the working class thinks of themselves as separate from the non-working class. And the fact is that they're all part of the 99%. And they all have so much more in common than they have uh, not in common. And, and this idea of we are the 99% has been exactly what a lot of people needed to realize what they have in common. And, and the fact that we're all being screwed by these massive corporations and they are responsible for what's happening with the lowering of living standards in so many countries and with the, you know, these crazy Ponzi schemes that we call, you know, the banking industry, uh, you know, people losing their pensions and losing everything, losing their homes, and, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a great movement and of course it's been met with lots of arrests and police brutality and etc. But, but it's been very tenacious. It's also, you know, people have to get arrested day after day after day before the police in many cases have successfully cleared an occupy site and then the next thing that happens is people go and occupy houses you know, and, and the energy moves into, in different directions. But even when they've cleared uh, Occupy sites, the general assemblies and other sorts of things still continue. So, yeah, I think I've been impressed. Um, but, you know, it needs to grow and, and it needs to get better organized. And, and, I, and I hope that will happen. You know, I, I have no idea. But I'm, I, I think of myself as a cheerleader for social, <coughs> social movements, very much including the Occupy movement. So... I, you know, I'll just be cheering it on and hoping it, it grows. The mainstream media is horrible in the U.S. and it's also pretty bad in, in much of Europe, but it's especially bad in the U.S. And, you know, especially in the U.S. there's just no emphasis on, on uh, any kind of local artists, you know, everything is... I mean, radio, radio stations have gone from... commercial radio stations have gone from playing uh, rotating through the same 2,000 songs over and over again to now many of them are rotating through the same 300 songs. They 300 songs, that's all. Out of all the hundreds of thousands, millions of artists out there, millions of CDs recorded over the decades, they play 300 songs, you know, depending on the genre. Each one you know, has their 300 country songs or 300 classic rock songs or 300 whatever, you know? And um, it's just completely broken. Uh, it doesn't work for the overwhelming majority of, of artists and yet uh, you know, in the U.S., the Musicians Union uh, supports ACTA and, and these other kinds of, um, you know, treaties. And I think, um, I mean, it, it, because they say that uh, stealing music hurts working musicians, which is ridiculous, because it would only hurt musicians if they're getting actually airplay in the first place. If they're not getting airplay, nobody's going to hear about who they are, unless it's through free downloads on the net. So. The idea that this is hurting uh, working musicians is just silly. What's hurting working musicians is the music industry, you know, not not free downloads. But but on the other hand, the funny thing about it is the more I think about, if they actually could enforce ACTA, if ACTA were actually, if people were actually getting arrested for downloading music, and they really effectively got the commercial music off of the web, then I think actually that could be the best thing for independent musicians because then when people are faced with not having the easy access to, to the music they already know, they actually will start looking for less familiar things for independent music on the web, and it could be the best cultural renaissance we have ever seen, potentially. I don't know, but it's just a 
because uh, your uh, songs, uh, most of them, they are uh, to f yeah, because all of my free songs. to download. Yeah, yeah. they're all so how is it, uh, how is it uh, work it for you? Like, uh, are you not uh, <coughs> getting screwed? Uh, how they say uh, like it works uh, great because for me, I mean, especially if you're like over forty and you've you've been working as a musician since before MP3s became popular. I, before then, I sold 90% of my CDs at shows. Now I sell 90% of my CDs at shows. People buy CDs when they come to a show because that's when they hear the artist. Uh, they don't, they're not going to buy CDs in stores if they don't know the artist. The only reason they'd buy CDs in stores is if they hear the artist on the radio, which they're not going to, which isn't going to happen with somebody like me, you know. So, I mean, I did have national distribution on a CD several years ago uh, and with EMI, and I sold 400 CDs in stores, which is nothing. You know, I mean, I sell much more than that touring, you know. And uh, so that's, I mean, I think the, free, the phenomenon of free downloads is absolutely, unequivocally, the best thing to happen to independent musicians since... You know, I, it's, I don't know since when. I mean, in the 60s, there were, in the U.S., there were a lot of independent FM radio stations that played whatever they wanted to play. Even though they were commercial stations, they had advertising. It was mostly local advertising, and they could play whatever they wanted to play as long as people listened. And so they had a lot of leeway, and they really launched the careers of a lot of great musicians. That's dead. That's been dead for, for a long time, since Reagan. They killed, uh, you know, local radio. It's completely gone and um, so it, it, I'd say at least that free downloads on the web is the best thing since since the 60s since we had independent radio stations and um, it, it doesn't replace the mass media because you can still see that the mass media has a huge impact and and you can see that you know most of those artists on the web that have hundred million downloads it's not because of word of mouth it's because they they've been promoted hugely on big pop you know, records, you know, radio stations around the world, but um, but it's still it's it's very it, it's the best thing to happen to independent artists anyway. You know, I mean, I would still say media is important and we need to get control over it and not let it be run by the Fortune 500. But we, the internet has been really good for for us. There's a good there's a whole bunch of independent media in the U.S. Uh, that's that's doing great, really great stuff. Uh, they don't reach anything close to the numbers of people that the public radio or commercial media reaches, but but it's uh, still, yeah. I'm afraid I, I should go because mm -hmm. my daughter's waiting. Would you like to add something? Go lay go. siege to the bank in Frankfurt. That's what I'd I'd uh -huh. add. You know, May nineteenth. You know, okay. if I were here, that's where I'd be. But yeah, no. I, I, the only thing I'd add, just very generally, is is that. Uh, social movements are the only way to change the world and um, and if you think that you know if you're one of these artistic types who, who's, who's feeling guilty for being an artist and you think you should be an organizer well you know maybe maybe organizing is a very good thing to do but music is important music has always been part of social movements and don't feel guilty for being a musician or an artist just try to make good art and good music and and watch the effect that it might have you know which will be positive <laughs>